this is John Cavasso, Vicar of Torstock, welcoming you to this video and hoping that you enjoy seeing again some of the uh, events of our parish life during the years 1992 to 1995. I'd like to thank Alan Braund and AJB Video Productions for being with us and filming many of these events. Um, particularly my thanks are to Alan Braund himself for his enthusiasm for this project. There are fuller versions of the underlying videos that you will see clips of in this video at the rectory if you'd like to see them, but please ring me first. My thanks also to John Chaplin for his expert Torstock VE Day commemoration video, of which again there are excerpts in this video. My final thanks must be to St Michael's, to Chris Sanderson and the children for the video of Torstock Village, People and Places, and also to the choir for the excerpts from their CD which I used as part of the introductory music to this video.
and um, the coach is nearly full. Um, the, the price will be £2.50 for children's Adore Peas, children Adore Peas and Grannies, and, um, and £3.50 for everyone else. So, um, and the money will be taken from the morning that we all go. We'll be leaving at 9 o'clock on Monday the 10th, and returning hopefully around about 7. Ringers had a very good outing yesterday and getting back to about 7 o'clock at night. They really enjoyed their day. We want to book the next year for Ringers outing. It's the first Sunday in August next year. And on Wednesday at 7.30, the Sayan Bible Study Group meets at 7.30 at the rectory. On Friday at 6.30, a coffee evening at David and Di Gibson's house, Martins Hill. There will be a bring and buy and raffle. If it's wet, it will be in the village hall in Bishop's Fulton. Remember Di in our prayers today. She's recently just had to go into hospital. So the coffee evening is going ahead as planned. Next Saturday at 3 o'clock, the wedding of Darren Thompson and Pauline Cassidy. Next Sunday at 8 o'clock, Holy Communion service. At 11.15, family service and the baptism of Mitchell James Wood. Son and of the Holy Spirit.
Thank you very much. Thank you, John. That's lovely. Very Hang on a minute. Don't move. Yes. Thank you. Emma, Thank you. he was hungry, I'm afraid. <laughs> well, you've so many foods here, probably wasn't expecting. No, you've been to half eleven lunches, actually. I don't want
afternoon. <laughs> this is where our church warden lives here, Linska. your hard work.
Oh, yeah. Four pound nine bottles is a good carrot cake. There's a lot of carrots in it. Four pound nine bottles. Any advance on four pound with this carrot cake? I'm looking all the way around five pound nine bottles with this carrot cake. Any more than five pound with the carrot cake? Looking all the way around four and five pound. Six pound nine bottles with the carrot cake. Six pound. Any advance on six pound with the carrot cake? Carrot cake. Going. Because I've got a new, unworn, Jaguar, full yeah. length of yeah. 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 You got the thing, size 14. Bell. Uh, yeah. No, anyway, just that. A full length of coke. Right then, now that must be worth some money. 50 pounds. 40 pounds? Is that the one, is it? You want me to... No, you, you walk it up and down there. That's right. You walk it down. There you are. There it is. No, you don't want you to buy it. Yeah, then. Yeah, that's right. Now, yeah, no, as I say, that's what... It is what? 50 pounds. 40 pounds, then. 30? 30? 20? No, remember more. 20 pounds. 10? 20 pounds, I've got. 20 pound I've got. Any advance on 20 pound for the coat? 20 pound. Anyone going to say one? Going at 20 pound. Going. Gone. Ian Sterling's search for stars has taken him not to Cornwall, but North Devon tonight. If you can remember as far back as your early school days, you might recall that the next best thing, after your mother and sliced bread, was probably the dinner lady. Behind me is the village of Tolstock in North Devon. And in the local primary school, Mary Smallridge has been serving school dinners for the last 30 years. Now, in a few minutes, she's going to be invited to the school hall for several surprises. <laughs> But I'd just like to welcome you all here this afternoon in order to uh, say thank you very much to Mary who's been here for a long, long time. And I'd just like to introduce Mr. Clifford Bell, who is our vice chair, who might say a few words. We have a little gift that has come from all of us, and that from everybody, that I wish you all the well and health and everything from the parish entirely. Yes, thank and you it is from the school as well as the from us for Thank many, many Thank you. <laughs> Mary, this is this is your sterling salute. Oh, thank you very much. <laughs> As if you hadn't had enough. Now, I've, yeah. I've been stuck behind the door. What's happened? What have I missed? Oh. <laughs> have you had lovely presents? Oh, lovely, thank you. Right. Now, third, it is 30 years, isn't it? Yes. You don't look old enough. Oh, wow. <laughs> <laughs> Now, as you stand, it must be a very strange feeling today. It is, it is. <laughs> has, is there anything just pops out of your mind as you think back? Well, not 19... really, no. it's do, you remember the, do you remember 1964, the first... Well, I remember the first day I came here, yes. What happened the first day? Well... <laughs> <laughs> is it awful? Oh, no. What, what do you mean? The, what happened on the first day? 
Oh, no, no, it wasn't it was awful, always... yes, I'm just, but I remember it, you know. I don't remember anything special about it. But when you got home after that first day, no regrets then? Oh, no, and I never thought I'd be here for 30 years. <laughs> <laughs> now, there's, now, we've got several letters about you. We've got more than one letter about you. One was from Mrs. Bradford, and the other one was from Edward and Jenny. Do you know who they are? Mm -hmm. Are Edward and Jenny here? Yeah. Are they here? Which, are you Jenny? Yeah. Come, and, come and stand here. Edward, come over here. <laughs> now, I'm going to get the truth now. <laughs> now, Jenny, what's your favourite What's your favorite food that Mrs. Smallridge cooks for you? Um, salad. So, oh, very good. <laughs> very modern. <laughs> not, not pasties and things like that. No. You like salad? Mm. Edward, how about you? Roast. Roast? Roast what? What? Roast beef and roast lamb? Mm. Is it, it's not better than your mummy's, is it? No. <laughs> <laughs> no, you had to say that. <laughs> Thank you very much. Thank you. Now... Congratulations, Mary, and this is really on behalf of the school and the village. Thank you very much. Thank you very Thank much. Thank you.
Hello, Frank. Uh, welcome, John. Hello, Frank. Hi, John. Nice to see you. Uh, yeah. Yeah. Thank you. Just came to see you after the VE day. It was really great. Thank you for what you did. Yeah, it's my huge day, wasn't it? Yeah, lovely yeah, day. Lovely day. Just take this thing yeah. off and then come and join you. Right. Yeah, I stayed today as well. Yeah, it's a Frank, I really enjoyed the other day at um, down in the on the village, the VE day. Mm. How was it all put together? Because you were very involved. It was a fantastic day, wasn't yeah. it? Yeah, yeah. I en I enjoyed it as well, and um, the number of people that came uh, was really fantastic. I I thought the. Uh, from the very elderly to the very young. That's um, right. Um, as a parish council, we were approached by the British Legion. Right. And I think that they approached nearly every parish uh, uh, in this area, asking them if they would do something uh, for V Day. Right. And uh, depending on the in uh, uh, depending on how en enthusiastic the parish council were, uh, I think most of them did something. Mm. Um, but I thought ours was a bit special. Um, How did you put together the, you know, because there were a lot of people involved, weren't there? Oh, well, yes, yes. Uh, David Smallridge, as the chairman of the parish council, he formed a, a working committee and uh, they had several meetings. Um, a number of which I didn't attend because my special duties was to build the uh, arrange for the building of the bomb power. Mm, right. And uh, it's always a busy time of the year for us, and uh, I don't know that I wanted to get involved in uh, <laughs> too much. Um, um, deciding what was going in the sandwiches and that sort of thing. <laughs> so uh, um, quite often, when I'd done my little bit, I left them to it. Yes. Can you, yeah. When you built the the uh, bonfire it must take a lot of uh, was it was it flax or hay or straw? Or? Yeah, this was a bit special um, because uh, years ago it was traditionally made of old packet wood. But uh, when they asked me about it in the first beginning, I thought to myself, "My goodness me, I'm going to have an awful job to get people to cut enough packets for it." Yes. And during my travels in the winter, I'd been noticing these bales of flax left out in the field. And uh, I got hold of the owner, and apparently the firm that deals with the flax had got miles too much this year, and they weren't going to collect it. Yeah. So I got in touch with him to find out how much he would sell them to me for. And uh, he kindly said that if I wanted them for a bonfire on VE day, that I could help myself as long as I came after them, I could have them for nothing. The same way Lynn said, you, you have a... A bale of linseed, and you set fire. Is any round bale of linseed? You set fire to. You won't get within about twenty foot of them. Twenty? No. The service because it was one didn't want to glorify war, mm -hmm. one wanted to pray for peace, but also we want to remember with mm. thankfulness mm. to God those who had given their lives so that we could be free. That's right. Um, I noticed one or two people actually, some who were there this morning, uh, didn't come because they it's too painful still for them to remember. Yes, yeah. yes. It is, it is um, a painful memory if, uh, for some, it's mm. got to be. Mm. And uh, of course it raises an awful lot of nostalgia in all the, all the people that can remember it. That's right. And uh, there's lots of things that have been on television that have brought tears to my eyes. Yes, yes. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. I've been listening to Radio Devon this week and um, there's been a lot of debate about whether today or this weekend ought to be a celebration weekend. Probably you've all been um, listening as well. It's been tremendous to watch some of the things that have been happening. Uh, my mother kindly taped for me yesterday, this morning the service from St Paul's Cathedral and I'm looking forward to watching that later on. But we 
did catch a little bit of the uh, events in Hyde Park this afternoon. It's wonderful to have the opportunity, in a sense, to celebrate the end of war, but also to think of those who still suffer as a result of war. Many younger people didn't seem to know what it was all about in any case. One child who asked who Winston Churchill was said he was an insurance salesman. It's very interesting the different thoughts that this particular 50th anniversary, probably the last one in the sense that we shall celebrate in this way certainly, will bring into all of our hearts and minds. Many of you who are older than myself will remember clearly the events of that V-Day and the events of the war itself. We need to perhaps, and here I speak with deference because I'm of a different generation to those who went through the war, to remember today in repentance, with resolve, to seek reconciliation between man and man, to fight against injustice as the war did. But today also, as on our official Remembrance Sunday in November, we remember those who have died, those who were injured, those who are still suffering, their families and friends. A little statistic that I picked up in 1940, just shortly after the war had begun, there were some 3,400 families receiving state pensions because members of their family had died. Pensions, war pensions. But by 1945, that number had risen to 645,000 in England some measure of the suffering that war caused in our own nation, let alone in the other nations involved in the war and today throughout the world. But we also have to remember that picture that um, you can see as you go out of the church of the return home. Hector, welcome home at the end of the war. Just a little phrase here from a chaplain. I thought it was well worth reading out, reading out. His name was the Reverend George Chapman Potts, and he wrote home from Belson to his wife Dorothy on the 25th of April 1945. One remembers the British Tommy standing guard at the heart of that hell, and working like a Trojan among the dying, the dead, the sick, the living. How can one ever forget him? If one speaks to him, he replies softly. He cannot quite trust himself to speak. He is quiet, but in his heart is a burning white flame which will never go out. Lovely hymn number 212, to be a pilgrim who would true valor see. Let him come hither, 212.
those who gave their lives for us in wars and we pray for peace. We pray that you will bless our community here together and we thank you for your love for us. Our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done in earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory, for ever and ever. Amen. A two minutes silence.
I'll welcome you here officially in a moment, but I thought just in case there are one or two who are still not here, we would start with the hymn number 58. I tried to go through most of the marriage services over the last uh, 12 years and see which is the most popular hymn, but it proved an impossible task. So I've chosen this one. Number 58, give me oil in my lamp, keep me burning. And instead of verse 2, make me a fisher of men, ladies, I think we're going to say... May, uh, give, um, give me peace in my heart. Keep me resting. Thank you. Give me peace in my heart. Keep me resting. So shall we stand to sing? Give me oil in my lamp. Keep me burning. <laughs> for a moment. First of all, I'd like to say thank you to all of you for coming back. It really means a lot to us here at Thorstock and especially to me. It's so nice to see so many familiar faces. It's one of the special parts of being a vicar, being involved in marriages, and I love it. So thank you very much for coming back. I'd like to say thank you to someone who's very often behind the scenes, who's probably played at most of your weddings, Malcolm, our organist, who's been organist for 26 years, I think, and must have played at hundreds of weddings. Can we just give him a clap? <laughs> After the service, we'll be having a cup of tea and refreshments down at the village hall. And I thank Ruth, my wife, and uh, the ladies of the church for providing that. And if you'd like to come, you'd be most welcome. We will be having photographs, and we're going to do photographs in year groups. So if you're married in 1984, 1985, 1986, the photographer will be here about quarter to five. And um, if um, there's time, they'll be in the church, otherwise it'll be down in the village hall. There's a little red book. Anyone got a little red book? You like to hold it up? There's a little red book. How many of you have seen these before because you've signed them when you've come to services? But if you'd like to sign it as it comes round, there's a page a couple. And if you want to put any, any information about your wedding or something, someone just told me just now that a piece of masonry, a piece of wood fell down as they were walking up the aisle. And they weren't quite sure whether they were going to arrive here. 
Another one told me the other day that uh, there was a lady dressed in white sitting at their rehearsal, and they weren't quite sure who it was. It must have been someone from a previous generation. So if you'd like to sign this book as it comes round, please do. I've, a lot of you have kindly sent wedding photos, and if uh, there are any who uh, still are able to send photos, I'd be most grateful. We're trying to complete an album, and I've this year completed what I've been trying to do for a long time, a little um, calendar on the dates of all the folks who are married here since 1984. And I try and remember each of you in prayer on your anniversary. And I'm hoping that one day we might get around to sending cards out to say congratulations every five years. I'd like to thank AJB Videos. Many of you will know them. Probably they photograph one or two of your weddings for being here. We're doing a um, church video. We've been doing it for about four years. And um, it's going to be out at Easter, so if you like the video, you might see yourselves on it at this service or at other events. And please contact me later on. Whilst there was no difficulty in choosing a reading, this was the most popular at all the weddings in the last 12 years. The reading is from 1 Corinthians chapter 13. Love. And now I will show you the most excellent way. If I speak in the tongues of men and of angels, but have not love, I am only a resounding gong or a clanging cymbal. If I have the gift of prophecy and can fathom all mysteries and all knowledge, and if I have a faith that can move mountains, but have not love, I am nothing. If I give all I possess to the poor, and surrender my body to the flames, but have not love, I gain nothing. Love is patient. Love is kind. It does not envy. It does not boast. It is not proud. It is not rude. It is not self-seeking. It is not easily angered. It keeps no record of wrongs. Love does not delight in evil, but rejoices with the truth. It always protects, always trusts, always hopes, and always perseveres. Love never fails. And now these three remain, faith, hope, and love. But the greatest of these is love. Now, Howard and Marianne Bodhi, 149 is the hymn they have chosen. Love divine, all loves excelling.
centre part of our service, which is our reaffirmation of marriage vows. It's good to be able to do this from time to time. And um, I'm going to ask my wife Ruth to come up and help me, and you'll see the reaffirmation in the middle um, of the service sheet. And then I'm going to say a prayer which is familiar, for it is the beginning of the marriage service in the ASB. I call upon the husbands here to reaffirm their marriage vows, saying with me, and please turn to your wife as you say this, I reaffirm my solemn promise to my wife to have and to hold, for better, for worse, for richer, for poorer, in sickness and in health, to love and to cherish, till death us do part. I call upon the wives here to reaffirm their marriage vows to their husbands. I reaffirm my promise to my husband to have and to hold, for better, for worse, for richer, for poorer, in sickness and in health, to love and to cherish, till death are still part. And a prayer, so we bow our heads for this prayer. God our Father, you have taught us through your Son that love is the fulfilling of the law. Grant to all of us, your servants, that loving one another, we may continue in your love until our lives end through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Would you like to sit down please for a moment? Now I'd like to give you all um, a, car a card and various... Um, if I can find them. What have I done with them? Oh dear. I've lost them. Here they are. They're looking after them for me. And you, most of you will remember doing the marriage preparation course. Probably most of you won't have had this last paper which is called Happily Ever After. So can I pass these to you as, you, as I ask you to come up? And I'm going to ask you to come up in year groups. And this is our, this is our um, Christmas card. It was painted by an artist in Appledore who um, painted it about 20 years ago because you see we've got the pinnacles on it which uh, went down about 15 years ago and um, I'd like to give you all a copy of um, a Christmas card with love from the church for this special day and also um, a little card which I found recently which I thought was very lovely God grant me the courage to change the things I can change the serenity to accept those I cannot change, and the wisdom to know the difference. I thought that was very appropriate for marriage. So, if there's anyone who was married in 1984, is anyone married in 1984? No, I think there were only about three or four, and none of them have come back. 1985, 1985 anybody? 1985. Philip and Shireen. And what are the name of your children? Katie and Rebecca. Katie and Rebecca. It's lovely to see the children coming along as well. You we haven't got a card, have you? I must give you a card. Thank you. 1986? Anyone married in 1986? my memory if I can remember everyone's name. Robert and Claire. Anyone married in 1987 or marriage blessing in 1987? 1988. 1988, anybody? Who 
confident that you brought your children. Thank you all for bringing your children to this special service too. And we have that prayer at the marriage service, asking God's blessing on the future children. I often wonder what the children will be like. <laughs> Catherine and John, that's right, yes. Here we are. Congratulations. Okay. What's this little one? Chloe. Sophie sat down. Sophie's still sat down. Nineteen eighty-nine. We're up to now, I think. Nineteen eighty-nine. We've got every year represented now, haven't we? <laughs> Sue and Roger. Congratulations. And what's your name on there? Mark. Yeah. Happily ever after. Happy birthday. Twenty years time. Nineteen ninety. Come out to nineteen ninety. Any 1990s here? Oh, we've got two here. We've got a Linda and Michael who live just down the road. And what are the two children? Ellie and Alexander. Congratulations to you all. Thank you. Thank you. And 27 years marriage blessing, wasn't it, in 1990? And one six-week-old grandchild then, and now we've got six. You've got six <laughs> grandchildren, isn't it? Gracious. Right. Congratulations. Don't really need to have it, do you? I remember your marriage blessing because you and um, your children sort of said what lovely parents you've been, didn't they? <laughs> Thank you. Congratulations. 1991 we're coming up to now. 1991. Sean and Vanessa. And what's what's the one called? Hannah. Hannah. Hannah's very small. One month old. Brilliant. Mandy and Trevor and Sophie. Congratulations. <laughs> I've had such nice mum and dad. There we are. <laughs> well, what are you able to come? Yeah, David's not able to come because what does David do? Yes. David's working today, so sorry if he can't come. Yeah. Sally and David. And Sally's nana, she told me, is 101 this year. She's about 95 now. Congratulations. And Gil and Carol Taylor. Yeah, 1991. And I have to see very carefully because Gil and Carol are directors of the, uh, the Basketball Light Opera and I'm singing the Mikado this year. So they're going to boot me out of their thing well. Congratulations. Thank you. 1992, then in 1992. 1992, three years ago. Nine passes. Mark and Mandy Trot. And two doors, sorry. <laughs> oh dear. Mandy with Mandy Trot, I know it's wrong. And what are your two children called? <laughs> David and Jackie Gregory and James. Congratulations to you. Uh, 1993. 1993. Ah, Sharon and Andrew Goodwin. Rachel and Martin Doohy and little Jacob. And now it gives me a good opportunity to, to introduce Katrina and Michael Rue who wrote you all the letters. And they've been working hard since July sending out all the invitations. And Thomas. Thomas. Sorry. 
So thank you very much. I think we ought to give you a clap because you've done all the work. <laughs> Nineteen ninety four, last year, nineteen ninety four. Alan and Linda Tanner, nineteen ninety four. Pretend to be living in the village, and I'll tell you congratulations. David and Julia Hold, congratulations. Mantha and Richard, that's right, Mill. I knew you said you're a Christian your uh, name. Thank you. <laughs> Congratulations. Hello. Michelle and Simon, that's right. I was going to say the wrong name from her. What happened? Here. Michelle and Simon J go here. Swan and Daniel Benham and Kirsten. Kirsten. And this year, who's this year? I think there's two or three for 1995, wasn't there? Liz and Rob Wills, 1995. Only a few weeks ago, a few months ago, isn't it? Six weeks ago. Six weeks ago. Anyone beat six weeks or is this the last couple to get married here? Brilliant. Well done. Congratulations. Six weeks ago. <coughs> Andre and Angela Muxworthy. This is Katrina's mum. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. Laura and <laughs> Did I call you wrong? Laura and Peter, it's nice to you've been married four months. Two months. Sparkly with it. Congratulations. Well, thank you all very much for coming back. We've had 123 weddings since 1984. And it's lovely that so many are able to come back for this reunion. One is should be 153. Make me a channel of your peace. And this is for Justin and Emma who've chosen it. Thank you very much for seeing me. Much 
the vows you are about to take are to be made in the name of God who is the judge of all and who knows all the secrets of our hearts therefore if either of you knows any reason why you may not lawfully marry you must declare it now Stephen John will you take Amanda Jane to be your wife will you love her comfort her honor and protect her and forsaking all others be faithful to her as long as you both shall live I will Amanda Jane, will you take Stephen John to be your husband? Will you love him, comfort him, honor and protect him, and forsaking all others, be faithful to him as long as you both shall live? I will. Who gives this woman to be married to this man? I, I do. Thank you very much. I, Stephen John. I, Stephen John. Take you, Amanda Jane. Take you, Amanda Jane. To be my wife. To be my wife. To have and to hold. To have and to hold. From this day forward. For this day forward. For better, for worse. For better, for worse. For richer, for poorer. For richer, for poorer. In sickness and in health. In sickness and in health. To love, cherish and obey. To love, cherish and obey. Till death is do part. To death must you part. According to God's holy law. According to God's holy law. And this is my solemn vow. And this is my solemn vow. I, Amanda Jane. I, Amanda Jane. Take you, Stephen John. Take you, Stephen John. To be my husband. To be my husband. To have and to hold. To have and to hold. From this day forward. From this day forward. For better, for worse. For better, for worse. For richer, for poorer. For richer, for poorer. In sickness and in health. In sickness and in health. To love, cherish and obey. To love, cherish and obey. <laughs> till death us do part. Till death us do part. According to God's holy law. According to, God, according to God's holy law. And this is my solemn vow. And this is my solemn vow. We bow our heads for a moment as we ask God's blessing upon their wedding ring. Heavenly Father, by your blessing, let this ring be to Stephen and Amanda a symbol of unending love and faithfulness to remind them of the vow and covenant which they have made this day through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Stephen takes the ring and gives it to Amanda with these words. I give you this ring. I give you this ring. As a sign of our marriage. Of a sign of our marriage. With my body I honour you. With my bo body I honour you. All that I am I give to you. All that I am I give to you. And all that I have I share with you. And all that I have I share with you. Within the love of God. Within the love of God. Father, Son and Holy Spirit. Father, Son and Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. And the Mandarin receiving the ring says the same words. I receive this ring. I receive this ring as a sign of our marriage. As a sign of our marriage. With my body I honour you. With my body I honour you. All that I am I give to you. All that I am I give to you. And all that I have I share with you. 
and all that I have I share with you. Within the love of God. Within the love of God. Father, Son and Holy Spirit. Father, Son and Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. It will go on. <laughs> like so now. In the presence of God and before this congregation, Stephen and Amanda have given their consent and made their marriage vows to each other. They have declared their marriage by joining of hands and by giving and receiving of a ring. I therefore proclaim that they are husband and wife. That which God has joined together, let not man divide. Shall we give them a clap?